Stencil time. Been applying a lot of stencils. Kind of cross-eyed right now, not gonna lie. Um, it does turn out though. If you take your time with this and you go slow, make sure you're doing exactly what you want. If it doesn't look right to you, tear it off, redo it. Just take your time. I think it'll be a lot better in the long run. Some things I, I want to show you. You want to have a nice exacto knife. Um, this has been a huge help when trying to cut the decals to a better size as they merge into other decals. Uh, for instance, when I started bringing this cryptic into the skulls, um, I really wanted to have this to cut these vinyl pieces exactly where I wanted them so I wouldn't have any overlaying stencils. The upper and the lower I don't know, I, they're, they're semi-complete. You can see where I've brought the skulls in from here, which will merge into the handguard. And I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. Taking a closer look at these Freedom Stencil Kits, you can see the detail is just phenomenal. I mean, they do a great job. And like I said earlier in my other videos, these are a high heat stencil. They will take the heat, they do, you know, you can see how well they stretch, you know, they stretch around corners and things like that. So, and this is just a big mess of them. You can imagine when you have just like a, like for instance, you know, you have just a thin line. Look at how much that stretches before it breaks. So you can really, really manipulate and move these around wherever you want. The, uh, there's a rifle kit and then a pistol kit when it comes to how they sell them to you. I bought two pistol kits because I didn't realize I was doing it first but this is the size of a pistol kit with two pages so what I ended up doing was getting four total pages of cryptic camo. Um, I also got one skull camo page and I got these two grim reaper ones. Uh, you're not probably going to be able to make that out in the light. But uh, I don't know what I'm going to do with these. I might, I don't know, put them on a mug or something like that. Let's get back out to the garage. Let's spray this bad boy up. Let's see how it turns out. I'm going to leave the uh, stencils on for the baking process because with this Magpul, remember I talked to you guys in the first video, Magpul had no idea what temperatures and time limits this polymer could hold up with. I did... 10 minutes in, 10 minutes out, 10 minutes in, 10 minutes out, 10 minutes in. Temperature of 350 degrees and I got no melting at all. It's a really good thing to know if you guys start to do this Magpul polymer gun coating. 350 degrees is okay, at least it was on this PRS Gen 3 buttstock. Uh, like I said, 10 minutes in, 10 minutes out, 10 minutes in, 10 minutes out. Welcome back to the garage guys. Uh, we're going to go over the uh, process of spraying after we've stenciled here our buttstock, um, the Magpul PRS Gen 3. Getting started, I'm going to, you can see some of these stencils kind of lift up after a while. Uh, what we're going to do and I'm hoping it's going to help is we're going to preheat this again just like we did when we did our base coat. Only 200 degrees, only probably for about 15 minutes. And then when it comes back out, I'm going to go ahead and push any lifting stencils down. Uh, hopefully that preheat process helps get them a little stickier, tackier, and uh, lay down a little bit better. One more thing I wanted to show you guys was the difference between a 4-ounce and an 8-ounce bottle of gun coat. Um, this is your 4-ounce. Obviously it's smaller. This is your 8-ounce. This is my base coat white. I've got a light gray, a dark gray, and also a brown in the four ounce that I'm gonna use. Now, this base coat, eight ounces, is pretty much gone. I've done the buttstock, the upper, the lower, the handguard. There's not much left of this flat white. So if uh, you plan on doing a couple rifles, or if you plan on doing you know, you're going to use this gun coat, it's a color you know you're going to want to use more and more. Get yourself a bigger bottle because this only lasted me for about one rifle. The that I'm going to be spraying the most is going to be, you know, kind of where the most of the stencils are. Uh, obviously I want to spray nice and heavily around all the skulls, 
uh, especially where all the scales are. Uh, I, I'm not going to go like crazy though on where there isn't a lot of stenciling. Just a dusting to, to give it an off color from what the base is. Uh, I don't want to lose too much of my white. I like the white. The white is you know, primarily why I went this color in the first place or this camouflage in the first place. So I don't want to lose too much of the white. So after three minutes of shaking, these are our three colors we're going to use. We have our light flat gray. Apologize for the lighting, uh, but it is lighter. Then we have our our brown. And we also have our just flat gray. This is actually darker than the light gray. I'm sure it will be once it dries. Once it dries, it'll be a lot the contrast will be a lot different between the two grays once they dry, I'm sure. We do have the uh, buttstock in the oven. Uh, it is heating up nicely at 200 degrees. It's been in there for about seven minutes now. You can already start to see those decals are shrinking down. So let's take it out and make sure they're all sticking the way they should. So I got a little impatient and uh, we're still in the curing process here, but I wanted to start pulling some stencils off and see how it turned out. Um, there's still a lot of petals and stuff that need to come off. That's the timer to go back in. But we can let it cure up a little bit more. Let that plastic really get hard. That's what she said. Um, the skull is actually held up pretty well. We'll find out for sure as we uh, pull the rest of them off. Um, sorry for the waving. But uh, you can see that that 350 degrees it does start to lift up those petals or stencils in some areas um, so word of caution on that it will they do hold up nice they don't pull any of the finish off you know that masking tape will actually burn to uh, your finish and pull it off so these vinyl stencils work out great I'm gonna get started on the upper and the lower here um, we'll bring in bring in the finished product of the uh, buttstock and it's a lot grayer than I thought it would be. You know, obviously the more yellow stenciling the more white I should have at the end, right? Um, I just didn't realize I guess how gray it really would be. But that's okay. Um, I'm gonna order some more white. You can already see I started to blend back the white by pulling all the stencils off and just dusting it with the white and dusting it with the gray. Um, you can see how good the stencils did. They held up really nice, even in the finest of lines. So I'll come back and dust this later with some more white and brown just to dirty and blend it up a little bit more so it's not so contrasty. The upper and the lower, I went pretty heavy with stenciling, so we're going to have a lot more white this time around, um, which is good, which is what I want. So we're going to get started on that. Uh, we'll do a, I can't tell the difference between the dark gray and the light gray. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and, you know, we'll do just the gray and see how that works. Preheat this guy uh, just before the stencils start really curling up because Anywhere they're not making contact with the metal, they're going to start curling. Um, so we want to make sure that we press everything down before we get it in the oven. And then we're just going to warm it up enough for the gun coat to really adhere. And we'll press the stencils down again before we start spraying. So here we go. Yeah, 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 yeah. 